Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're going to be looking at five one uh, day one on this one. Uh, what we're going to be going into in this unit is we're going to be talking about what's called trigonomic identities. Okay, so you've done plenty of trigonometry with our finding values, finding different graphs. We're going to move on to what's called our, our trigonomic identities to find trim, trigonomic vet, uh, trigonometric values from that. Okay, we're also going to be able to simplify and rewrite our trigonom trigonometric expressions. That's tough to say. So here are some very basic ones, our reciprocal and quotient identities. You've actually kind of talked about these already, especially with sine, cosine, uh, tangent, and being reciprocals of cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, we talk about reciprocals, we're just taking it and doing, uh, doing the flipping of it, right? So that's our reciprocal there. But additionally, Tangent is the same as taking the ratio of sine over cosine. And since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, that's the same as cosine over sine. So that's something else to be aware of that we can divide those out and get tangent like that. Okay, so how can we use those? So this one is, should be really straightforward what we're doing in here. We want to, if cosine of theta is equal to three, four, three over four, find the secant of theta. So in this one, you've probably already done this before. Cosine and cosine and secant are the ones that are reciprocals of each other. So since the cosine of theta is one over the secant theta, okay, that means that well, and I should do it this way: the secant of theta is equal to one over the cosine of theta. So in this scenario, I'm going to find the secant of theta by taking one over three fourths, which it's the same as multiplying by instead of dividing one by three over four, we're just simply going to take one times four over three, okay? So that is my uh, reciprocal there. We can also do this problem here, which you've done in the past, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently, okay? If the secant of x and the tangent of e equals five over four, and the tangent of x equals three over four, find the sine of x, okay? So in the past, what you would have done was you would have modeled this out as a triangle. So if I focus on tangent, let's say, let's say this is x, Tangent of that is opposite over adjacent. Secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent because that's the in, uh, reciprocal of cosine. So that makes that a five. So normally what you would do is you would say the sine of x here is going to be opposite three over five. Okay. So that is what you would normally done in the past. But I want to use my identities. I want to get practice using that. So instead of that, I'm going to look at it this way. Let's figure out if we know that secant of x is five over four, then that means the cosine of x is four over five. I'm simply doing the reciprocal definition there. Additionally, since I'm working now with cosine and tangent, then I know that tangent of x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x. That's our identity for that one. I'm gonna manipulate this until I can get sine by itself. So what that means is I'm gonna multiply both sides by cosine of x here. Okay, so I get cosine of x times the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x. That gets rid of that part. Since cosine of x is, uh, sorry, four-fifths, tangent of x is three-fourths, that means I can take four-fifths and multiply that by three-fourths to get my sine of x. And when I do that, these will cancel each other out, so I end up with three-fifths for sine of x. Same thing as earlier, but this is just my different method of I, demonstrating these uh, identity properties, okay? The next property is going to be based on Pythagorean theorem. It's our Pythagorean identities here. So what does it mean when I say this? So these are the three basic ones, but they're all kind of related to this idea, and this is related to our Pythagorean theorem. So let's say I look at this, for example. First of all, going back to what we did before, we know that if this radius is one for like a unit circle, the sine of theta here, okay, the sine of theta is equal to y divided by one, or in this case, just y. The cosine of theta is x over one in this, in this specific scenario. Well, but we also know that if we have a right triangle like this, we're modeling that, then that means I can do x squared plus y squared is equal to one squared. Okay, so instead of having a one squared, obviously that's just one, but the big key here is instead of x squared, I'm going to replace that with cosine, and I'm going to replace y with sine. 
So we're going to plug those in and we're going to get cosine of theta squared plus sine of theta squared is equal to one. We can kind of rewrite that a little bit here, but that's going to be what this is here. So when I say cosine theta squared, that's the same as saying cosine squared theta, and that's the same as sine squared theta equals one. Okay. The other two is based on uh, the other two prop, uh, identities here are based on this first one, sine, the sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Okay. So what I mean by that is let's start with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And let's divide every single thing here by sine squared theta. Okay. So when I do this, this factor are, can, simplifies to one because it's something divided by itself. Here I have cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. Well, if you remember from before, we have cotangent is cosine divided by sine. So that means if I if instead of going cosine divided by sine, I'm doing cosine, cosine squared divided by sine squared, that's the same as cotangent squared, okay? One over sine, that is the reciprocal of uh, cosecant. So this is gonna equal to cosecant squared. And this is this version right there. We do the same exact kind of work. If I start with my initial one, sine squared theta, plus cosine squared theta equals one here, okay? From here, I'm going to uh, divide everything by cosine squared. Okay, and when I do that, I've got sine squared over cosine squared. That is gonna be the same as tangent squared theta. These will turn into a one, and one divided by cosine squared is going to be secant squared theta. So that's where all three of these Pythagorean identities come from, okay? So how can we use that? So our first case here, we want to find cotangent of theta equals two and, the, and cosine of theta is less than zero, okay? Find the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. So again, you would have done this in a different way in the past, but for our purposes, I want to set this up using our identities. Since I'm dealing with cotangent, I'm going to look at my cotangent squared theta, okay? So the first thing I can do is I can take uh, cotangent squared. So I can take cotangent squared theta. That is going to be, if I cotangent theta is two, that's the same as saying that this is two squared plus one equals cosecant squared. Okay. So that's four plus one equals cosecant squared. Five equals cosecant squared. And then I could square root both sides here. So I get plus or minus square root of five is equal to the cosecant of theta, okay? So what helps with this is figuring out where am I at in my coordinate grid. So what I mean by that is we have cotangent is being positive. So remember all students take calculus. Tangent is gonna be positive here and here, but it also tells us that cosine of theta is less than zero. So when is cosine negative, but tangent's positive, it's gonna be in this quadrant out here. So that's what I'm working with here. So that means, since this is cosecant theta, I don't care about the positive version because cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. So that means that this is a negative root five for my cosecant theta. I get to ignore the positive version. It does not help me here. Well, cosecant is the same as the reciprocal of, of a sine. So that means I can do negative one over root five is going to give me my sine theta. And that's my first one I found. Now I should rationalize this as well. So I multiply by root five and root five. So my answer for the sine of theta is negative square root of five over five. Okay. Now that I have that information, I can go in and go back to my Pythagorean identity. I'm going to go back to this one. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. I want to solve this for cosine. So since I have sine of theta here, I'm going to go ahead and replace this and square it. So negative square root of five over five squared plus the so cosine squared theta equals one. If I square this out, this is going to turn to a positive. Root five times root five is five. Uh, five times five is 25 here. Okay. So that's going to be plus cosine squared theta equals one. So this is the same as one fifth when I reduce that. So let's subtract that to the other side. So cosine squared theta 
is equal to one minus one fifth is going to give me four fifths. And then I square root that. So that means the cosine of theta is equal to a plus or minus. Uh, this will, if I do this, it'll be square root of, sorry, not square root of four fifths. So I take the square root of four is two, and then I got the root five underneath. Um, but again, from our original kind of uh, requirement, cosine has to be less than zero. So I don't care about the positive version. So the cosine of theta will be a negative two over root five, meaning I'm just going to go ahead and rationalize that. So I get a negative two root five over five. And that's my final answer here. And again, you would have done this problem before. You just done, would have done it in different methods. I want to purposely use our Pythagorean identities in this case. Okay. We're going to keep going with more, especially the Pythagorean identities, and how to use that to simplify certain expressions. For now, these are our basic versions. So that's just our introduction. So that's going to be it for today. All right. Take care, everyone.